I figured that in this video I'll just narrate it because I want to see if people are interested in this. Plus, I actually use a special technique that I don't think many people actually know how to do. It's a very simple thing to do uh, to get actual shapes whenever you're 3D printing stuff. So as far as things goes, uh, this particular one, it came in because uh, someone I know they broke a handle on their truck when they tried to get a jack out of the truck. And the uh, fact is, is they don't make the handles anymore. They don't, there's, the truck's not made anymore and so on. So I'm it, um, unless you want to do something weird. So as far as this goes, um, basically, you know, the design goes normal. What I use is Fusion 360. And the biggest thing to note is, you know, you just get your circles as best you can and sizes as best you can. And one thing I would advise is if it's any difficult location like this particular one was, if you don't think there's anything odd about it, then just make a few test samples if you have the ability to do that by just um, whacking everything besides what goes on the shaft uh, or whatever you're building for. And that way you can see the actual size. Um, this particular one is a little bit weird uh, because I couldn't get into the area properly. Measurement tools are a little bit big for the area. And um, it then it turned out after a few tests was what went on there, they figured out that there was a flat spot on the shaft. So this is where the technique came in. If the area is very difficult to get to, it's very difficult to get measurement tools and whatnot into there, uh, there is a particular trick you can use depending on how complex what you're fitting the object around, in this case being a shaft. And uh, just use uh, Play-Doh. Uh, you can buy it at any Walmart or whatever. It's cheap, easy to deal with. And uh, basically what you're trying to do is you're forcing it to be a mold then afterwards, as you see here, just pour some beeswax in it. It's easy to come by type of stuff. Beeswax melts at a low temperature, so it really shouldn't cause any problems. And then simply just freeze it uh, for a little bit, you know, 20, 30 minutes, and you'll get your final parts. This will give you the rough dimensions, um, if there's any holes or whatever it may be. Um, and this actually helped out quite a bit within the design because without this, I kept running into a particular problem, especially since the flat pot part is there. I didn't know how high up the flat part goes up because it didn't go all the way up. Um, and, and the fact of the matter is, is I could not figure that out because again, I couldn't get measurement tools in the area. I, I obviously couldn't get into the area, uh, physically. And, um, that was pretty much it. Now what I want to show at this point is even if you do design something and keep things in mind, it can break. Um, you know, this is rapid prototype type of stuff. And that's not a bad thing depending on what you're trying to go for. So that's one big thing to keep in mind. Now it's very important to, if you take a look at this actual type of break, the reason why I took a picture of this and shown it is it's very important to know how something broke. If it's uh, very um, across, then it could be a laser adhesion type of problem. And that could be uh, filament chains or something that will fix that, maybe temperatures or something like that. Obviously, in this case, that was not the problem. The layer adhesion seemed to be great. The uh, Then you take a look at the infill. That looks like to be one of the problems. The second problem is, is as uh, things happen, where does the energy go to? This is something that you got to keep in mind when designing things um, and also testing it. But when you design things, where does the energy go to? It's not obvious in many cases until you do some destructive testing as such. And, um, and for this, because the, um, the actual part where the shaft goes around it's very thin that's where all the forces go to and whatnot that's where all the energy goes to if the energy is greater than what it can withstand then obviously this will happen so how would i fix this um well one thing we found is the space is actually much bigger than um you know than than this so i can make things a bit bigger that's one way Plus, on top of that, a different infill. I was using 
um, a particular type of I forgot what it's called. It starts with a G. But I was using 15% infill, and I can up that infill quite a bit. Plus, I can use something like 3D honeycomb to get maximum strength with infill alone. Then, um, obviously, increase the size, which will help there. Um, and then use a few other techniques. So some of the techniques that I use is um, basically when you curve edges and stuff like that. Um, if you do like a 90 degree edge, which is, you know, if that's your design choice, that's your design choice. But you actually get more strength by little curves, little lips. Um, there's less problems with laser, layer adhesion. Because even if there is a layer adhesion problem, basically what you're fighting against is the layer adhesion problem um, greater than the, uh, like, can it withstand whatever energy comes across? Because, you know, uh, layer adhesion, even if that is an actual problem, parts don't come apart without energy being put into it. So can it withstand the um, energy? That's the big thing there. Uh, uh, those little curves and stuff like that actually do help with that, not only aesthetically. Um, a few other things is, um, you know, note the um, size and whatever. Um, that also helps, as I mentioned before. Because basically, I think it was like uh, 10 millimeters, if I remember right, um, all around where the shaft goes in. And now you increased it by a, a little bit more. No, it was, it was five millimeters. Sorry about that. So you increased it by 10, and so now it's a total of 15 millimeters across, which would give it a bit more strength. Not three times more strength, as uh, some might think, but it will give it a bit more strength into itself. Plus, on top of that, with the honeycomb, 3D honeycomb and a few other things, that should help there. Um, now, as far as that goes, uh, that pretty much about it. A uh, big thing I wanted to show on this is the uh, the ability where you can actually take Play-Doh or something like Play-Doh and slap it into an area as long as it's not, uh, you know, you got a weird 3D effect as if, if it's like a shaft or something around to that point, you can actually uh, create a mold like that pour some beeswax in it, you know, melt it. How you do that is just basically take a um, cup or whatever, uh, metal, whatever, if you can, and uh, put a um, pot of water, put the uh, uh, metal, whatever, cup or whatever, in the middle of that, um, heat up the water, um, and, and which heats up that, wait for it to liquidize, and then just pour that in there. And the neat thing with this is, you do lose a little bit of beeswax, but it's like virtually none because uh, uh, gases and whatnot, you know, you lose a little. But basically, all right, you're done with the mold and whatever. You can remelt that and do whatever you want with it, which is a neat thing why I like to use beeswax whenever I can. But anyway, so as far as that goes, um, like this, subscribe and whatnot, and check out the Patreon. And let me know what you want to see in the future. Hope you have a great day.